Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel, Alec Reads, and today we're reading Marriage of Heartstopper Fan Fiction by Heartstopper underscore fan22 on Wattpad. And today we read a chapter 93, Triggers. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy today's episode. Um, also, I am doing a inclusivity project um, on YouTube, maybe on Spotify. If you guys want that, um, you can always let me know. Um, anyway, um, I have a work email that is alec, um, that is readsalec at gmail.com. Um, so you guys can email me and you can ask questions and you can give recommendations or whatever you want to do. We can just say hello. I would love to just say hello to you guys. Um, we can be like pen pals. <gasps> I would love that. Anyway, besides the point, um, <laughs> if you have recommendations or just want to say hello, you can always leave that down in the comments and I will always respond. Um, like, subscribe, comment. What else? Oh, I have Spotify. Um, it's Alec Reads on Spotify. Same as here. Um, with a picture of Tori Spring because I love her. Chapter 93. Triggers. Nick's perspective. Charlie. I said, turning my head to look at my boyfriend who's been sitting beside me on the sofa watching TV. Yes, love? He said, still keeping his focus on the TV. I think I want to try and do the modeling thing. Do you think it's stupid? I had captured his full attention this time. He snapped his head around, facing me and my worried look, seeking his approval. A big smile appeared on his face. He grips my shoulders with both of his hands. I think you should. I really do. He says in an upbeat tone, still grasping a seriousness in the conversation. I just don't know. I want to go for it, but I don't know. He turned his whole body to face me. Sitting crisscross, Charlie's staple position to sit in when we're having a, a couch conversation. He runs his fingers through my hair, pulling it back, running, ruining my middle part. You're really spiraling about this, aren't you? He says in a questioning way, as if he was certain that I was, but he wanted to hear me admit it. I slumped my shoulders. Yeah. It's scary leaving my career to do something else. I went to university for teaching. Now that just seems like a waste of time. I'm unloading everything onto Charlie, but I can tell he doesn't mind at all. He's rather curious than anything else. Babe, it's not a waste of time. You can always go back to teaching if this doesn't work out. Your degree isn't getting burned. I laughed at his point, but he was right. I could always go back to teaching, but this could be my only opportunity to do modeling, and I really love it. I love teaching, but not in the way I love modeling. It's exciting and has a thrilling aspect to it, and I just love it. I ran my fingers along his jawline and leaned into him, gently kissing his neck and cheeks. Why are you always right? I say into the kisses. I just am. I laughed a little at his confidence. I, asked, I liked seeing him this way. Well, maybe it's because you're a nerd. I say, pulling away from his neck. Well, obviously, you like nerds. I cut him off by pressing my lips to his. Are you trying to shut me up, Nicholas? I cringe to the thought of him calling me Nicholas. I hate it when people call me Nicholas. My mom never called me that. The only person who did was my dad, and the childhood memories I had with him weren't good ones. David was the only one who always got to go to games and do fun things with dad. They would make some excuse why I couldn't join and leave me crying to my mom, asking her why dad hated me. She would comfort me and say positive things about him, but I know she was just as disappointed in him as me. I never knew why dad didn't like me as much as David. David used to call me a fairy and a pussy because I liked to do things with mom, like bake and watch movies with her. I liked doing everything and anything with her because 
I needed her to love me because if she didn't, who would? Sure wouldn't be my dad and David. Dad wanted me to toughen up so I could be like David, and when I wasn't the perfect son he wanted me to be, he would just yell at me to stop being dramatic and a little girl. I can't just imagine it now, Dad and David just loving the fact that I'm bi, laughing and making me the center of their jokes. I feel a warm hand brush across my chest. Sorry. I forget you don't like being called that. Did I upset you? Do you need a hug? I didn't want Charlie to know why it bugged me. I hate my stupid dad, but that his stupid shit bugs me. I hate it. I want to forget about him. I want to forget he even exists. I want it to be behind me. I did really want a hug, so I nodded my head yes and leant into him, just resting my head on his shoulder. A minute or two goes by. Charlie scrunches my already messed up hair and says, Are you recharging? Mm-hmm. I mumble, nuzzling my face into his shoulder more now. Charlie's Perspective I know that Nick gets triggered by something when someone calls him Nicholas. I used to do it a lot until I noticed he almost winces when someone says it, like they're pulling a dark memory or suppressing rubbing alcohol on an open wound that hasn't healed properly. I'm assuming it's something to do with his dad. He never says anything about him. Anytime his mom or I mention him, he ignores it or gets really upset. He tries to hide it, but we can tell. I won't ask him about it. He obviously doesn't want to hear it. I understand that. People asking about the shit that hurts can bring it up and bring it up before you're ready to talk about it. But it just makes the situation more hurtful, and I don't want Nick to be hurting. He pulls away, and I lean in and kiss him this time. After I kiss him, I inform him about our meeting up with Elle and Tao, trying to distract him from what he's upset about. Elle has invited us to go for coffee tomorrow at a new coffee shop down by the pier. I think it would be nice to do something fun tomorrow. What do you think? Nick pulled me into his lap, cuddling me, making a smile like you wouldn't believe. If you're there, I'm there, he said in a loving tone. And I felt like I fell in love with him all over again. Third person. The two boys cuddled on the couch, giving each other attention by kissing or the other affection known as physical touch. But what neither of them knew was how something that sounded like a fun meetup would turn into something very upsetting. Chapter 94. Morning Routine. Charlie's Perspective. Nick is usually the early riser, earlier than me, thanks to the sleeping medication that I take that makes me so tired all the time. It has some pluses, like I can actually sleep now, which sleep is probably important, but some downfalls, like I need to take at least one nap a day or I'm so tired I can't even function, which does really get in the way of plans. Nick and me had a hard time adjusting to me needing more rest. Now, we got in some small arguments over it that were dramatic and stupid, saying stuff we both didn't mean, typical relationship drama. We always got over it and felt bad, but it took time and patience, but we got to the point where it's the normal. Nick was lying all stretched out. He was very much a bed hog all night, which is never like him, but I was happy he was sleeping, so I just lifted up his arm and crawled underneath them. Last night, instead of trying to move him, he didn't get much sleep the night before, so I wanted him to have a good sleep. I slowly got out of bed this morning, not waking Nick. He was still asleep. I went to the washroom to freshen up and brush my teeth, got dressed, washed my face, 
the boring usual. When I came back to the room, he was so passed out his mouth was draped open with drool spilling from his mouth. He only drooled when he was really tired and in such a deep sleep. Of course, I couldn't leave my fiancé like that. I have climbed back into bed, tilted his head so I can clean up his face. I lifted his head, stripping the pillowcase, and threw it in the hamper. I put my pillow under his head, as the other one now didn't have a pillowcase on it, and I laid beside him, staring at his beautiful face. He was so adorable when he slept. I wanted to squeeze him so tight, but restrained myself to let him get as much rest as he needed. I took his hand in mine and whispered, I love you so much. You're so cute. I wish you could kiss you in your perfect freckles. I thought for a moment at how peaceful it was right now. In our bed, the room was in a perfect state. There wasn't a single piece of garbage or clothes on the floor. The sun was shining on us, and the glow was so beautiful. It was trance-like. The temperature was perfect, and it was warm, but not too warm. Nick was laying there sound asleep, and I got to watch him. He watches me sleep every morning, and I never understood why until now. I get it now. It's so beautiful watching the person you love sleep there in such a vulnerable state, and it's like you're their guardian angel watching over them, making sure they're okay. Making sure nothing can touch them and disrupt their silent slumber. Maybe I'm being dramatic and overtelling this simple yet wonderful situation, but that's how I see it. You mean everything to me, Nick. I can't picture my life without you. I can't imagine waking up and not having these amazing moments that feel like they should be in a fairy tale or something cheesy and stupid like that. It's true, though. I love you with my entire heart, Nick Nelson. A smile creeps onto his face, making me blush. Tell me more, he says in a groggy tone, barely awake. You weren't supposed to hear that. You were supposed to be sleeping, I say in a laugh. We do need to go meet with Ellen Tao soon for morning coffee and tea if my fiancé wants. He nods his head. Yes, I want. Nick's perspective. I got up and started getting ready for the day. Charlie kept trying to tickle me while I was shaving. He can be a proper clown sometimes, but I love him. I couldn't let him get away with it, though. He needed to be taught a lesson. I picked him up and threw him over my shoulder, holding him captive in my arms. Put me down, he said while trying to squeeze out of my arms. Well, this is what you get. I almost cut my bloody face, he laughs. Do you think this is funny, Charlie? Okay. Fine. I'm never putting you down again. No, Nick, this isn't fair. I'm smaller than you. With a sassy tone, I said, You should have thought of that before you started tickling me. Charlie was squirming away too much now, so I chucked him down on the bed and pinned him down. You play too much, I said, and he just continued to do what he did best. Laugh. I couldn't help but join in myself. I love his laugh. It was so breathtaking. I kissed him on the forehead and lips before letting him go. Let's go now. We need to go or we will be late, Charlie said as we left the house. All right, that is the end of today's episode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, like, subscribe, or comment down below whether it's just to say hello or whether it's a recommendation. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Like. Subscribe. Oh, I already said that, didn't I? Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Goodbye, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, friends!